I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, peace about your friends and let us have some good time together. Today we have a clear evidence that the Muhammadan God is nothing but a copy of the Hindu's God. You know, if I say, if I teach, if I give reference, the Muslims will still will not believe me. But what if the reference is collected and given to us by Zakir Naik? What if the reference is coming from someone, the Muslim, they claim that he is a big shot? My voice is a little low. Um, I think this is from your side. From my side, the microphone here is high. <clears throat> so... You know, we mentioned before that uh, in the Hindus, they have a private part stone. The Muslim, they have a private part stone, the black stone. It's even in the shape of a vagina. But today, we are going to show you way more exposure to the stupidity of the cult of Islam. It turned out that what Muslim they call monotheism is a copy word by word from the Hindu scriptures. It's not me who is saying that. It is Zakir Naik, may Allah grant him a lot of versions in heaven. So this is your Zakir Naik. So Muslim, don't tell me you are lying, don't tell me, etc. This is Zakir Naik is going to tell you the concept of God in Islam. Look at the title. Look at the look at the the concept of God in Islam. How Zakir Naik present to us the concept of God in Islam. Listen carefully. Let's understand the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112. Verse number one to four, which says, Qul Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah one and only. Allah Hussamad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Walam ahad. There's nothing like Him. This is a four line definition of Almighty God given in the glorious Quran. Any person says so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, the same four points. The first. Listen carefully. This is exactly. Muslim, listen carefully. This is exactly. This is what? This is exactly. Not similar not close to be this is exactly 
what is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Who is saying that? Zakir Naik. This is exactly. Listen. As God. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. The same four points. The first is, Kul Hu Allah Ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Same as Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, which says, Ikkam Evidityam. God is only one without a second. The second point. Allah Hu Samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Same thing which you mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 10, verse number 3, that Almighty God is the Supreme Lord of all the worlds. Point number 3. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. The same thing which is mentioned in Swaytash Vatar Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9, that Almighty God has got no parents, He has got no master, He has got no mother, He has got no father. And the fourth is, Walam yakul lahu kufwan ad. There's nothing like him. The same which is mentioned in Sweta Sweta Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, which says, Natasya patima asti. Of him, there is no likeness. There's nothing like him. So if any person says so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, which is mentioned in the glorious Quran is for a class, or the Hindu scriptures, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. <laughs> so why you Muslim you say you have a God? You, you, you know, the funny about this stupid religion, they say to you that the Hindus are pagan. They say to you that the Hindus, they are not going to go to hell. Then we find that the Muslims, they stole from the Hindu scriptures exactly the same verses. And they put them in a book which is came thousands of years after. If we go and search, what, how old is the Hindu scriptures is? Like the one he was reading for us from. You will see it goes between 1200 BCE and 200 BCE. So who stole from who? Who is the one who stole the God concept? The one who wrote the book thousands of years before Muhammad or the one who came thousands of years after the Hindus? And as long, Zakir Naik said the word exactly the same and we agree with it. Then how the Muslim they say, that Muhammad was Abrahamic and he claimed that he was following Abraham when in fact he was following the, you know the, the Hindus God how in the world that work have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this before we continue as, as uh, Abdul smart Abdul he says did you hear about the Spanish equinization? Equinization? Yeah. Hey, Abdul, I heard about that. Do you mean when your prophet says, if I became victorious, I'm going to kill all the Christian and the Jews in the Arabian Peninsula? Is that what you are talking about? So it's okay to do for you equinization? Those Spanish, they went after those who betrayed their country. As simple as that. Anyone came with the occupation, they go after them. Your prophet was doing what? He was killing people, kicking them out from their land. Inquisition. A Muslim, he is complaining about inquisition. Inquisition, brother. A Muslim, he don't like inquisition. It's not good, brother. <clears throat> what happened to the Christian in Turkey? What happened to the Christian in Iraq? What happened? Where where they go? Where disappear? We Muslims against Inquisition. Islam. Islam is a religion of peace and mercy and Hindu potato. Listen, I'm not calling the Hindus potatoes, I'm calling you. Listen to your God. The concept of God is the same as the concept of gods of the Hindus. From now on, never open your mouth and say our God is unique. 
Never say our God is one. You took that even from the Hindus. By the way, because the Hindus, they believe in many gods, but they believe that there is one supreme God. And that's what Zakir Naik is speaking of. They kiss stones, you kiss stones. They go to a temple, believe it's holy. You believe in a temple, which is holy, the center of holiness in the world. Everything in your religion <clears throat> is nothing but is stolen from somebody else. The difference between Islam and Hinduism, Muhammad, he was living between some Jews, some Christians, some, uh, you know, Arab have many gods, Sabians. So he took from everybody little. But it's clear now that the concept of the cult of Muhammad is 100% Hindus. And it's not me who's saying that. You see, when Zakir Naik, he says exactly Exactly what? This is exactly what you can find in the Hindu scriptures. And even he consider in different video, he speak about Muhammad mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. So how Muhammad is Abrahamic? Now we remember that we already, we got the Muslim busted and the Muslims, they help us and they admit that Muhammad never was Abrahamic. He was from the Arab pagan. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned this. The people of Mecca, they were pagan. He is not from the Abrahamic faith. He did not know who is Gabriel. You see it? So Muhammad, the Hindus, is bringing the God of the Hindu, claiming that this is the God of Abraham but there is no proof of such a thing first of all since when Abraham he approved kissing stones since when Abraham why Abraham even will go to Mecca you know this is the most stupid thing ever I mean even the Roman they did not go there because there's nothing there this is just a desert there's nothing there's no civilization there's nothing so why in, why in the world anyone want to go to that land? So when the Muslim, they come and they say to us, you know, Islam is Abrahamic religion, we find that they have nothing to do with Abraham. And actually, if we go in the Quran, you know, one of the lies the Muslim, they say to us that the one who raised the Kaaba was Abraham. <clears throat> but according to Muslims, the one who built the Kaaba, it was the angels. <laughs> in chapter 2 verse 127 it says the one who raised the <clears throat> the foundation of the Kaaba which means the Kaaba was destroyed he raised the foundation he did not make foundation the foundation was there he raised the foundation it was Abraham and Ishmael okay what happened to Abraham why he left same time if we check the Quran we will find a different verse a totally clear contradiction. No one ever came to that town before Muhammad. <clears throat> Nobody ever came before Muhammad to that town. Let us see the verse. Huh? Um, so we can love uh, this website no one ever وَمَا رَسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ نَذِيرٌ Here we go. <coughs> Did Muhammad 
is the first one to be sent to Mecca, supposedly? The Quran says. If the Muslim, they will say to us, oh, they are talking in the time of Muhammad. Well, that would be a mistake because it says min qablika, before you. It doesn't say even in your time. It says min qablika. You know, good to try, Abdul. If you try to answer it, you know, if you. This is a chapter 34, verse number 44. Do you see it says, nor sent to them before you? Before you. So the stupid Quran confirm that before Muhammad, no one came to this land. And the Quran confirmed before you. So the Muslim, they can say, because you know, the Muslim, they will say, uh, they are talking about that time, that time when Muhammad came, he is the first one who came to Mecca because there's no, you know, in his generation, it says before you. Min qablika. We never send before you, Muhammad. We never even send them scriptures. If Abraham was there, well, according to Islam, Allah, he gave Abraham scriptures. And the Quran call it Suhuf Ibrahim. Where we can find that those scriptures? This is a chapter 87, verse number 19. Do you see it? Do you see it? So, Abraham, he received scriptures. Abraham, he went to the Kaaba, according to Muslims. Abraham, he built the Kaaba. Abraham, according to Muslims, uh, his son Ishmael, he did marry from the Arab, according to them. And Muhammad is from Ishmael, which is a stupid lie. So how they never receive the scriptures? Isn't it the Muslim they believe that even Ishmael is a messenger of God? Are you following with me? This God, who cannot maintain his language, and he keep contradicting himself. And look at the Abdul. We are talking about the stupid God. They talk about my face. They are obsessed with my face. Christian Prince, why are you going to show your face? Stupidity is amazing. Sons of Muta. Why? You have a you have some girls for me? For rent? To do Muta as the Prophet he allow? I'm not interested. Why do you want to see my face? Because they can ref cannot refute what we are showing you. They love to change the topic in the speed of light. This is what the Abdul did. Potatoes. Potato, potato, potatoes. And here we fry them. I want a smart Muslim, if he is ever exist, to tell us how Abraham received the scriptures, how Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba, how Abraham is the father of Ishmael, how Muhammad is the son, the, the grandson, son, 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 son of Ishmael, as you claim. And then the Quran says that nobody came before Muhammad to the Kaaba, to Mecca. Who is the stupid here? Who is the stupid? This is the same guy, he come again. Deuteronomy 8, 22, 8, 8 to 29. <laughs> Let me ask, answer you, Europe, just to show you how stupid you are, like your prophet. He left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. If you have a problem with the Old Testament, Abdul, if you have a problem with it, that means you have to spit at your God and at your prophet. Because you're a stupid prophet, he says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. And not only that, they were reading the same book, according to the hadith when he mentioned that. The same exact book. Do you see the stupidity of this religion? When your God, Aka Muhammad, he asked the Jews and he was reading from the same exact book. And then he said to the Jews, bring me the Torah. And the Torah brought to him. And they read for him from the Torah. And supposedly one of the Jews, he put his hand there over a verse. And then Muhammad, he grabbed the Torah and he says, he put it in the top of the cushion. 
And he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So you, Abdul, you have a stupid religion and you have a stupid logic and you are outdated because obviously you are not in contact with the stupidity of your prophet. You make fun of the Old Testament, your prophet, he says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee and he swear by it. So who is the stupid here? Do you see the stupidity? And all of this, by the way, is just to change the topic. No way. We will go back to the stupid Muhammad. Here we go. But we just show you, it doesn't matter what you say, I will get you busted. It doesn't matter. And is it your stupid Quran keeps saying, confirming what is with them? So your Quran confirm what is with us. <laughs> the Muslim, they make fun of their prophet. Because when you make fun of this, the book, you are making fun of your stupid biggest Abdul. This is the biggest Abdul in the world. I mean, at least show respect. What's wrong with you, Muhammadan? You don't have respect to the biggest Abdul. This is the biggest Abdul ever exists. Look what he said. Bring the Torah. He sat on the cushion and he said, bring the Torah. It was then brought. Then Muhammad, he would draw the cushion from under his ass. And he, from his beneath, and he, and he placed the Torah on it, saying, I believe, I believe in thee. I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. And if I have a camera at that time, I'm sure that Muhammad was crying. Cowards. And now let us talk about the Catholic. <laughs> Son of Muta, I get lost. <laughs> the Catholic is the one who kicked you out from Europe. That is the truth. And this is why you cry so much because of the Catholic. God bless them. So listen carefully. The Muslim, they have no logic. This is why they change the topic like monkeys. Even monkey is a Muslim. According to Islam, a female monkey, she committed adultery. Not muta, because muta is not adultery in Islam. You see, if the other monkey, he pay her, that will be muta, she will be fine. But what happened, this monkey, she did not do muta. So what she did was not halal. During the pre-Islamic period, and this one of the Sahaba saying that, of ignorance, I saw the she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it. Look, stoning to death is exist for monkeys too. Can you believe it? Abdul, he saw a monkey, he's throwing rocks at a monkey. That means they are stoning this monkey because she committed adultery. They were stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. And you are worried about that the, the, the Old Testament, Abdul. <laughs> illegal sexual intercourse. Are you sure it was illegal? I mean, are you sure? But what, what if she was engaged? Come on, like, come on. But if you read the story, by the way, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will laugh. You will see that this monkey, she is married. Yes, brother, she is married. Chapanzi, she have a red ass. She was married and her husband was sleeping over her arm. And then she saw another young monkey. You know, like, like he start blinking and making noise, sexy noise, like you. And he sang for her, like, I'm sexy and you know it. The female monkey, this is a Muslim monkey, what a shame. What a shame for a Muslim monkey to do that. She would draw her arm from under the head of the husband slowly. Look how filthy. And then she went behind the tree and they did boom boom. This is the same as Muhammad when his wife she was sleeping around. Then the monkey, female monkey, she came back and she put her arm under the head of her husband. Man, oh man. Aman Rabbi Aman. You cannot trust female in this zaman. She put her hand under the head of the husband and she acted as she did nothing. But Allah is all merciful, brother. The male monkey, he smells sperm. <laughs> he starts sniffing, you know where? You know where? Not her mouth, hello. 
and then he starts screaming ha, 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 ha. and all the monkeys muslim monkeys mujahideen taliban they came from everywhere and they make a court judgment and they decide to stone this female monkey who committed illegal sexual intercourse and you are worried about the old testament abdul And you are worried about the Spanish Abdul. They love to change topic. This is why the Muslim they can have they can find a place by the way in different places where a Christian easy they can be driven out. You cannot. Even if you try us take us away from a topic for two minutes, you made even our topic more fun. Here we go. Thank you for mentioning that. Now we go back to our topic. <laughs> the Hindu Allah. We have exactly the same concept. And what make it more unique, that even the video of Zakir Naik, the title of it, listen carefully, the title of it is the concept of God in Islam. And how Zakir Naik explained the concept of God in Islam, he says it is exactly the same as the concept of God in Hinduism. Regarding the concept of God in Islam, it's quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number one to four. And then he continue, and he say the following, how beautiful. Accepting that candidate as God. And this is exactly what is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures, the same four points. Exactly the same four points, and even he quote for us the verses. So why you keep lying? You know, here, you know, what is unique about this God? If the Hindu have the same God thousands of years before Muhammad. Right? Your neighbor is watching the video and he is saying this hadith is fake. For sure, you see, when a Muslim he says the hadith is fake, do you know what he's saying to us, Albert? When a Muslim he says this hadith is fake, let me tell you what they are saying to us. They are telling us that we Muslims are a bunch of liars. We lie not only to Christians, we lie even about our prophet. Because who is the stupid one who wrote this hadith? Muslims. Who is the one who published it? Muslims. Who is the one who preserve it? Muslims. Who is the one who put it in books? Muslims. Who is the one who put it in the Muslim website? Muslims. Who is the one who translate it? Muslims. So all of this is done by Muslims and he is saying it's fake. I agree. All Muslims are fake when they speak about Islam. Can you find me one Muslim is not lying about Islam? So when he say it's fake, you have to agree with him, brother, because their prophet is fake. Their religion is fake. Their books is fake. So how we can follow Islam? When the Muslim, he say it's fake, he is saying to us that we Muslims are lying about what our prophet said. This is literally what he's saying. But if we go to the hadith, the one he is saying, it is fake. May Allah fake you, brother. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Abdul. It's called Sahih al-Bukhari. What Sahih means? Sahih means authentic. So in the book of authentic, it's fake. Wow. Now I know why in America they say the word wow a lot. I think after reading the fake hadith of Muhammadan, they come to the conclusion that this is a lot of wow. Wow, wow. 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 So the book name is The Authentic of Al Bukhari and it's fake, brother. <laughs> what I say is stupidity is amazing. You have to agree. I mean, this is the reason, by the way, they don't dare to debate me, because they have a they they have a brain of an ant. Oh, don't don't insult ants, because we discovered that ants they can make Quran. I mean, the Muslim they said to us, who can make Quran like Allah? Do you remember the guy we asked him the question a few days ago about the ants making Quran? He said, that, oh, no, 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 Allah is quoting the ant. <laughs> You know, I love it that there is a God, nothing like him. He caught an ant. Allah, you are quoting the ant. Brother, your God is quoting the ant? 
That's deep. That's so deep. I never thought there's a God will quote the ant. And then the God, he says, who can make Quran like this when he is quoting the ant? So the ant is making Quran and Allah quoting the Quran of the ant and then he claimed that nobody can make Quran like the Quran of the ant. This is a very anti Quran. And then Allah, he caught not only the ant, Allah, he called the headhood. Al hudhood, look, al hudhood. Al hudhood. You know, all these verses is by the hudhood. You know, I found the women who is making Quran here, al hudhood. Uh, maybe you do not know who is al hudhood. Let me, let me show you. Do you guys know what, what is al hudhood? Do you know what al hudhood is? Right, let me show you the image of the Mr. Hudhood. We have to admit that Muhammad is a true prophet. I mean, think about it for a second. Take a look at this bird. Don't he look like a general in the Roman army? Allah, he chose him for a reason. Yes, al hudhud al hudhud making Quran. And by the way, did the hudhud was quoting the Hindu scriptures too? <laughs> Look at the hudhud eating a worm like hudhud. Come on, shame on you. Is that a halal worm? I'm not sure. Is it halal to eat worm? And this hudhud is a Muslim hudhud. I mean, what's wrong with this hudhud? And I will be more upset if he was eating during daytime on Ramadan. Do you think that hudhud he fasts in Ramadan, brother? Do you think do you think that those monkeys who committed sexual adultery they were fasting in Ramadan too? <laughs> so we have to come to an agreement that there is nobody can make Quran like the Quran of the hudhud and the Quran of the ant and the Quran of the elephant and the Quran of the spider and the Quran of the genie. And the Quran, even Mary making Quran, can you believe it? But nobody can make Quran like the Quran. Go back to zero. I want to take some Muslim calls today, but it is night, and not really. I'm not in the mood to to hear the Abdul. You know. By the way, uh, Sheikh uh, 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 Oyumad, you know his channel, right? He make a very funny videos about potatoes go watch it this guy is hilarious he put the videos in a very good way so when 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 Muhammadan they speak of they have a unique God we find that the unique God is unique in stupidity what is the purpose of this story anyway there's a king his name is Solomon he have genies he have a ring the ring of the Lord of the ring Flying carpet. What what is this? This is God. And then they say to you that Hindus they have tons of fiction stories about elephants, about animals, about etc. But didn't you copy from them? You copy those stories from who exactly, Muslims? This is God speaking. And look who is talking is the hudhud. All of this is not even Allah talking because here Sulaiman and the and, and the birds start talking. This is uh, you know the the bird is talking. I found the women ruling over them, blah 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 blah. And then I found blah 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 and I found blah 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 and then blah 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 blah. The hudhud he says la ilaha illallah. Look, the hudhud he says that. The bird, the hudhud, he says, la la So, I'm not going to keep you for long. I mean, it is Saturday night. You, people maybe are, I don't know, some countries they are, they have a daytime already. But uh, as you see, I'm so happy that Zakir Naik, he come to us with amazing study. 
proving to us that the concept of God in Hinduism and Islam is the same. And imagine this video is made by Zakarnak. You see, you see this picture. This is not made by Christian Prince Photoshop. This is not made by Christian Prince Photoshop. This is the channel of Zakir Naik. Look with me. 2.9 million subscriber. This is a video done, published, spoken by Zakir Naik. The concept of God And Hinduism of Hinduism and Islam is the same. This is the truth. What kind of religion you have then? And this is exactly what is also mentioned in Hindu scriptures. The same four points. The first is Pul Huallahu Ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Same as Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, which says, Ikkam Evidityam, God is only one without a second. The second point, Allah Samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Same thing which you mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 10, verse number three, that Almighty God is the supreme Lord of all the worlds. Point number three, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. The same thing which is mentioned in Swetash Vatar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine, that Almighty God has got no parents, He has got no master, He has got no mother, He has got no father. And the fourth is, Walam Yakul Lahukufuan Ad, there's nothing like Him. The same which is mentioned in Swetash Vatar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number three, which says, Natasse Patima Asti, of Him there is no likeness. There's nothing like him. So it's exactly the same. Now ask yourself, which book is copying from which book? The one who came thousands of years before Islam or the one who came thousands of years after Hinduism? I think you do not need to be a genius to know that Muhammad and Islam is nothing but a Hindu extend belief. And if you say how the Hindus came, the Arab always, they use it to do trade with India. Everybody do trade with India, not only the Arab. But the Arab, they are so close to India. If you go on and see the map, let me show you. You will see that the distance between in the sea, between India and the Arabian Peninsula is just a few hours in the ship. Few hours in the ship. Let us show you the map. Look with me. I will zoom out. Do you see how we close? The other side of the, of the sea is, is, is Pakistan today. But this is also always part of India. Do you see how close it is? few miles only this is why when people they say the arab the arab are not really arab as an ethnic most of those who call the they call them arab in the arabian peninsula they are indian and we do not need to prove it really so hard it's so easy if you look at the people of Emirate, the people of Qatar, the people of Saudi Arabia, and you look how they look like, you will see nothing but a Pakistani person. Isn't it this guy from Pakistan? Be honest. Look. This is the Prince of Qatar. 
how the Arab look different from people of Pakistan, if we can call the Arab as an ethnic. Their clothing, their customs, everything. You see this this new the the the, the Arabian they call it Arabian today. This is something new. But always they used to wear. If you go and see how people of Bahrain, people of Qatar, people of Emirat, people of Oman, how they used to dress, they dress exactly like the Indian in the old days. And then they start mixing with other cultures and learn how to dress differently. If you go and see even how people of Yemen they are dressing. So it is so clear that the God of Islam is nothing but a theft. But the important today for us about this video, when the Muslim they say to us that they are monotheist, it's a lie. Because if the same concept of Hinduism is exist in Islam and is exist before Islam, then where is monotheism in Islam then? A Muslim Sheikh, he said, redhead Sheikh, listen carefully what he will say. Ah. So the Meccan pagans and those who worship idols, they believed that there is God, but they cannot communicate with him directly. They cannot communicate with him directly. Muslims, was Muhammad able to communicate with his God directly? <laughs> You see, they are giving a definition of the pagans. The pagans, they believe in God, but they cannot communicate with him directly. Did Muhammad ever communicate with his God directly? So what Jibreel is about? Did Muhammad ever heard the voice of Allah, the fart of Allah? No. Even the Muslim agree that there is a person, his name is Jibreel. So what directly mean? So, by the definition of Islam, the one who cannot communicate directly with God is a pagan. It's not me who said that. Listen carefully. I'm not the one saying that. This is your sheikh. The pagan, they cannot communicate directly. Cannot communicate with him directly. So that's why they have taken those idols as intermediaries. See? So the Muslim cannot communicate with Allah directly. What they do? They take the black stone. This is why the Hadith says, the Prophet says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. This is why Muhammad, he says, whoever touched the black stone and the Yemeni corner, it erased his sin. So pagans are people who cannot communicate with God directly. They take a middle person and the Quran is full of a place speaking about Muhammad being the middle person. And the hadith clearly saying that Muhammad is the one who will intercede even for Muslims because Muslims cannot communicate with Allah directly. And Muhammad cannot communicate with Allah directly too. Muhammad, he communicate with the angel. The angel communicate with Allah. And what make it more funny that this cult claim that it is far away from paganism in the same time this cult believed that touching stones erase sin when we ask muslims why muhammad kissed the black stone they say because it's holy we ask them why it's holy they say because the prophet is it this is how confused they are because nobody can explain it and then a smart muslim he must say to you okay when you kiss your wife does that mean you she is you know my wife is a wife i want to have a baby from her <laughs> I kiss her because she is a female too. You are kissing the black stone for what reason? She's a female? She want to have a baby for you? The truth, yes. According to the Islamic tafsir, and we show the reference many times, that Arab women, they used to go around the Kaaba, placing their hand in their vagina when they have their period. And then they place their hand inside the black stone, praying to the black stone to make them have a baby soon. 
and they used to go around the Kaaba totally naked. And not to forget to mention, if you look how Muslims they wear the clothes of Hajj, and you look how the how the Buddhas and the Hindus they dress, especially those who they are priests, you will see, or those who do visiting temples, you will see they are wearing the same clothes. They uncover one shoulder, they cover one shoulder, they wear no underwear, and they wear a sandal. And as you see, the Arab used to go totally naked around the Kaaba. Now remember, the pagan, the Arab, they worship the same God of Muhammad, Allah. So how they are pagan worship the same God? He said because we cannot, they cannot communicate with Allah directly. But can Muslim answer why they are going around the Kaaba naked? What is exactly the religion is a practice there? What is the requirement in this religion to make people go around the Kaaba totally naked? Right? Uh, Harun, you are late. You know, you know, Harun, you are like a you are like a guy. Uh, his wife, she have a, she have ten kids. When he was away for seven years. And when he came, he said, how we can have 10, 10 kids? And I was away for seven years. She said to him, I was having twins. <laughs> uh, and that refuted him, refuted him. But he did not ask himself how she get pregnant. <laughs> you are late, Harun, Mr. Cat. This is your name, Harun. The Bible does not follow Ishmael's life. He went to the Kaaba with Abraham. Okay, can you tell us about Ishmael's life in the Quran? Can you tell us even what Ishmael mean? Can you even tell us what Abraham mean? <laughs> Secondly, Abdul, if your Quran saying that there is no warner came to the Kaaba before Muhammad, so how you lie and you say that Ishmael was there and Abraham was there? I mean, sometime the stupidity of this cult, it goes beyond imagination. Read carefully, Abdul. This is your Quran. The Quran confirmed there was no messengers came to the land of Arabia ever. And even for Mecca. And no scriptures ever came. Abraham came without scriptures. He left it home. Uh, he put it maybe in Amazon. Chapter 34, verse number 44. And we had not given them scriptures which they could study, nor sent to them before you. You might say, oh, this is before. It says before you. Nobody ever before Muhammad came to this land from the God of Islam, Allah. When I say stupidity is amazing, I have my reasons. I'm not going to keep you long. Already the video is, we passed 40 minutes, I guess. And this is the shortest I can make it. Unbelievable. Can I make it shorter than this? I don't think so. That is the shortest, I think. Actually, it's already 50, 50 minutes. So, I'm not good in making short videos, and the reason for that, I I believe I better give it time and give explanation because always there is people they are here for the first time. So we have to give details, especially for the new ones, and those videos will be downloaded, shared everywhere, as you know. So we want people to learn, and we want people, even those who have zero ground to, to understand, they will not go from zero. So we put information together to make the classroom complete even for the one who just came who never heard anything about the garbage of Muhammad so I hope you guys you have a good time today don't forget to subscribe and to share and download my videos is for free for everybody and uh, not for those who download sorry those who donate and those who do not donate all of you for me are equal but there is people who really support me for real and there is people maybe they cannot 
So I appreciate all of you and I pray to the Lord in this holy day, Saturday, that may the Lord open the heart and the eyes of the deceived Mohammedan. They are following a pagan, false prophet, pagan God, pagan Kaaba, black stone kissers have nothing to do with monotheism. And as you see, we prove it that everything the Muslims stand for, it was taken from the Hindus. And the one who said that, it's not me. It was Zakir Naik. And this Photoshop is done by Zakir Naik himself. The concept of God in Hinduism and Islam is the same. It's not Christian Prince who said that. The evidence is in front of you. The video is in front of you. The title is in front of you. And this is Zakir Naik channel have 2.9 million subscribers. This is not a fake channel. And the one is talking there saying that is Zakura himself. May Allah bless his testicles. The God of testicles is not successful to raise people who can debate us. He have no testicles, nothing left because we broke them all. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. Christ is Lord and Islam is a scam and we prove it every day. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Uh, because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Uh, the people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified <laughs> and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. <laughs>